Hi, BookTube. Welcome to Jackie's Literary Corner. I am Jackie, and this video is going to be based on a 7 on Sunday topic, but um, it kind of got, time kind of got away from me, and I didn't film this, and it was a topic that I wanted to do, but, you know, Terry came for one, and I was working quite a bit after she um, she went back home. So I never then the the one day off I did have I did film some videos obviously but I forgot to film this one. So I'm not gonna do since it's not Sunday anymore as I'm filming this, I'm just gonna do I'm gonna do the topic but not restrict it to seven books. Although this is small a small amount compared to how many backlist books I wanna get to, which that's the um that is the topic. Backlist books and series. Okay, so let's talk about my backlist series of books that I want to get to. And this is in no particular order. Okay, so first, I mean, this is one of the many ones on this list that I've already started this series. And I'm on book three of it. And that is the Wheel of Time series. And this is book three. Um, I did stop it because I recently got some library books. And when I get library books, I like to prioritize those first. And one of them is in the 400 page mark, so it's taking a little bit longer. And it wasn't the first book I read. The first book I read was um, the Agatha Christie Affair. So I have until the 29th with those, and I don't know what I'm going to do with that. But I'm going to talk about that in another video. I'm first. I'm going to focus on this right now. But um, this is a great fantasy series. It was... Um, Robert Jordan was inspired by Tolkien when he wrote the first book, and I do think that's a lot of people's criticisms of it. It reminds them too much of Lord of the Rings and, like, like he's trying to be Tolkien, and I don't think that's the case. I think he was just very inspired by Tolkien, and there are plenty of differences in the first book. But you can also see threads of similarities to um, Lord of the Rings in the first book. But, of course, as the series progresses, it does do its own thing. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. Although he does like Tolkien, his writing style is very descriptive. And sometimes he spends pages describing stuff that you're probably thinking, is this really relevant? Is this important? Especially as modern day readers. Um, but it's a really, it's fun. And there's 14 books all together. Or 15 counting the, the prequel. And I'm so far sticking with it. I know some people have quit the series after a while because of, you know, some of the things I've said. And the characters can get very frustrating and annoying. But, I mean, that's part of a good story. People in real life are frustrating and annoying at times. So, um, and I do need to get back to this. So, okay, so that's one of them. And then another series is... The Dark Tower series um, by Stephen King. And I, this was one of the ones where I read the first three books in the series. And I had to, I had stopped because this, Stephen King's books are pretty chunky. Although The Gunslinger is one of his shorter novels. And then by the time I decided to pick it up again, it had been a, quite a few years. So I decided to start over, and last year I read the first two books, The Gunslinger and um, The Drawing of Three. And when I was reading, I did recall some things about it. Like, I know that The Gunslinger is kind of Western-based, and I know the bad guy is the man in black, and um, Roland's kind of a very Clint Eastwood-esque character. And there was a movie adaptation, but I don't think it did very well. Um, I think the series would better off like as a mini, either a mini series or a series, like the books. So I'm I need to start pick up this one because I've read the first two books. Um, oh, another thing I remember is I remember the two main characters that are introduced in the second book, Eddie Dean and um, Susanna Walker. And I remember a little bit about them. Like, I remember that Eddie Dean had a cocaine addiction. But that's about it. Anyway, and this I remember was my 
was my favorite in the series because of my mostly because of Blaine the train. He was um his obsession with riddles and stuff like that. He kind of reminded me of Gollum a little bit. But so I need to pick this up and read this again. There are seven books in the series, and I want to get all the books in the series via this edition because I really like this, the images and stuff. So I need to get books five and seven in this edition because I already have book six in this one. So this is not what I want to get to. Okay, and let me go ahead and talk about some of my other series. Okay, so this is this next one is another series that I have started to read, but then when the adapt show adaptation came out, or I discovered it because it had already been out, and I think it was on like season three or four at the time when I started watching the show, decided to watch it, you know, the first hand first couple of seasons. Um, which thank God someone invented reruns, and and also DVDs for shows. Um, so. I had put down the books, and then I decided to pick them up again, and I attempted to, but then I put them down again, and I, went, now that the show has been over for a couple of years, I decided it's a good time to pick it up again. And I've already read, I read book one, and now I'm on book two, which, um, I've already, I read both book one and two twice now. This will be my third attempt. Or my third, it was my third attempt to read the first book. And then this is my second attempt to read book two. And like I said, that's not because I don't enjoy them. I, I really love these books. It's just bursting with the TV show. And sometimes, I hate to say as much as I'm a reader, it's a little too easy for me to just turn on the TV or put a DVD or a Blu-ray in. And, um, and call it lazy, but... Let's face it, we live in a, a time where a lot of people are lazy and because of everything's kind of handed to us. Um, and then the books are kind of long. So, and there is, and there is, um, a blurb from Robert Jordan. And there's also, I think on Robert Jordan's, one of his books, there's a blurb from George R. R. Martin, actually, which is funny. But yes, returning the favor. Um, so this is the second one, and I'm pretty far into the second one, so I need to read this. This has, is going to have seven books also, just like the Dark Tower series, but George R. R. Martin has not read, read, written the last couple books, and I think people are kind of peeved about that. They're getting very, fans are getting very impatient because it's been quite a few years um, since he wrote Dance with Dragons, which was the last book published. So, I don't know. But, anyway, so I need to... So, I got plenty of time to get to this. To get through these, my third attempt at rereading, at reading the series. Okay. Next we have... Let's go... Okay, so this is an author that's, I think, kind of controversial. Some people don't like some of the things he said. And some people don't like his... And, you know, his books aren't everybody's cup of tea. But I wanted to try it, um, and that is Jonathan Franzen's The Correction. And by the way, he did recently have a book come out. I don't remember what it's called. I know a, a lot of people are liking it. Um, I, can't, I wish I could remember what it was called, but I know there's, you know, religion or churches involved or something. But, um... I don't know off the top of my head what this is about, but I wanted to try it out. Um, and I got it from the roast office, so it wasn't that expensive when I got it. Even if I don't like it. But it's something that I just want to try, you know what I mean? I know, like I said, he's not everybody's cup of tea. But I think this is his, his second book? His second or third book, let me... Um... I don't know. I have to check the... I think there might have been another book that came before this. But this one was published in 2001. But like that, I think there's another book that came before this one. But yeah, this is definitely um, something I want to... So he has the one I just told you, I just mentioned that I can't remember what it's called. Um... 
There's one that's like freedom something. Um, and I think there's a few other books. And like there is, you know, it lists The 27th City and Strong Motion are two other books by him that are all that are listed in this. So it's something different and it's like that I would like to try. And you know, if I end up not liking, well, no harm, no foul, because I only spent like three dollars on this, so. Okay, now let's get some classics. Okay, here we have a famous Russian author and who has a lot of books. But this is the one that I first set my eyes on after reading one of his most famous works, which is Crime and Punishment. So, yes, I'm talking about Fyodor Dostoevsky. Um, and I've already read Crime and Punishment, which that was kind of a surprise. I didn't know if... I, I think it was just really great timing that I enjoyed it because when I was thinking about picking it up, I wasn't sure. I was uncertain about it, but it was during trivia night at my work. I remember the woman who used to host it had mentioned the book. Or one of the questions was about the book. And, um, I don't know. I just felt this desire to try it out. And then afterwards when I told her I was reading or after I read it, read it she was very much, she was like, isn't that a great book? And I agree with her at the time. So now I'm on to his next most famous, his other more famous works. And this one might have been his last one, his last published book. So, which, I wonder if that makes it a, not a backlist. Well, I guess it is a backlist still. Um, but, and I've read a good chunk of it already. And it's just a slow-moving story, and I'll, you know, um, a lot of talking and philosophical discussions are going on and stuff, so not a lot of action. Um, but I feel like I should save it for, like, autumn or something when I to pick it back up again. But this one, I want to read this one before I get to The Idiot, which I remember hearing on, from another booktuber that The Idiot, they feel like it's kind of the first representation of autism. So that got me interested in wanting to check out The Idiot, but then I was like, I feel like I should read this one first, because I had already started, started it. Um, so, and I do like it, it's just a slow-moving book. So there's that one, and then I'm going to probably read The Idiot after. Okay, and then we have one that I've gone pretty far, and that is Susanna Clark's Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Um, and since then, she's written two other books. She's wrote a book and published that was in the same world as Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. And then she also um, wrote... Paranesi, which has become very popular. And I think that reached more people because it's not as long as this one. And it's a little, and I imagine it's it's a very different story, you know, from what I've heard. And, you know, I've gone to chapter 39 in this. But like I said, this is another one I feel like I should save it for autumn or winter time. Picking it back up again, I really enjoy it. And I also, you know, I was very pleased with myself that I got as far as I did before I put it down again. Um, it's very, a very Dickensian book. I think that's the other thing. Like, if, I think, if you're a Dickens, Dickens fan, then I think you would enjoy it. If you haven't gotten to this one yet. But I am excited for what she comes up with, what Suzanne Clark comes up with next. After this one. And I still want to read Paranassi, but I feel like I owe this one to finish it first before I get to Paranassi. And then I would also like to check out that other book that takes place in the same world as this one. Next is one that was brought to my attention by two people, actually. The first person, I don't remember who brought it to my attention, but I remember Tristan from Tristan and Tristan the Classics also talked about it. And it is The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco. I keep thinking it might have been Olive from a book Olive who showed interest. It was either Olive or Jennifer Brooks who showed interest in this book the first time I heard about it. And that I remember, so I ended up buying it. And then Tristan, after buying it, talked about this book and described what it's about, which is a bit of a, 
a mystery, but a little very different from an, it's not like an Agatha type, Agatha Christie type mystery. It's a very, it's a little bit different than that. Um, and I did read a little bit of it already. Um, and I don't know how many books, let me see if there's a list of what he's written, what he ended up. Um, yeah, there's a lot. So there's like Prague Cemetery. I bet, I bet that would be interesting. The Mysterious Flame of Queen Leona. Loiana. Lo, 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 Baldolino. The Island of the Day Before. Full Coats Pendulum. The Name of the Rose. Yep. Okay. The Name of the, the Proscript to the Name of the Rose. Oh. So I might want to read that one. Invent in the Enemy. Confessions of a Young Novelist. The Infinity of Lust on Ugliness, History, Beauty, Turning Back the Clock on Literature, Five Moral Pieces, Kant and Platypus and the Platypus, Serendipitous, How to Travel with Salmon, Six Walks in the Fictional Woods, Misreadings, Travel and Hyperreality, Semiotics, and the Philosophy of Language, Theory of semi Semiotics, The Open Work. So yeah, there's a lot. So it's definitely a backless book. Um, okay, so there's that pile. And next we have one of my favorite authors from Magnificent, Charles Dickens in Dombey and Son. But here's the problem with this. As much as I like this so far, and I'm sure I will, lo I will love it no matter what, but, um, so although there were a few, there are a few Dickens works that I'm just, like, okay about. Like, Hard Times, for instance. It's not my favorite. Um, oh, that's still pretty good. It definitely got me thinking about things. But I keep thinking about Bleak House. And then I made the mistake of watching Tristan in Tristan's video where he talked about Bleak House. Because I was trying to... Because I feel like Dickens sometimes requires me to read him, read him more than once. And, like, his writing style is not when I'm used to it's very descriptive and beautiful writing but it's just sometimes it can be like because of what I'm used to I'm like you know trying to say you know get to the get to the main point or what are you describing because he uses so many words like I definitely get that he's not for everybody I mean I love his writing when I read when I'm reading his work but sometimes I get lost in the writing and I don't know what he said where I don't necessarily understand what's going on in the scene or who the character is because he writes so much. Um, so I feel like Dickens requires his books, whenever I read them, requires me to read them more than once. Um, although I've gotten better, like with this book, for instance. But, um, I mean, I feel like it's going to get to the point where I can read more than I can, you know, read enough of Dickens that I will... Although, who knows, I might get through his books before it gets to that point, anyway, where I can read Dickens, I only have to read him once. But why would you want to read him once? If you love Dickens, you probably want to read his books more than once. Um, but I keep thinking about Blake House and wanting to already reread it. But then I feel like I need to get to this one. And, you know, I feel like when I go on trips, like, to visit family from out of town, do I bring more than one Dickens book with me? Would that be too much for my little modern 21st century brain? Um, and plus, I feel like I can't focus. If I have two Dickens books, then I can't focus on either one of them. I can, I'll can like go back and forth between the two. So, so that's Dombey and Son I need to get to. Which this one is... And like I said, I... I enjoy it so far. It's just, it's like I keep thinking about Bleak House and wanting to reread that one. So he's got a lot. I still have quite a few Dickens books that I need to get to, and I don't have all of them yet. Yet I, but this is one of this is probably I think this is one of his later works. Okay, so now this one is actually to be fair, this one is a reread. <sighs> um. And I still have to read quite a bit of the author's work. But that is my reread of Middlemarch by George Eliot. I have been wanting to reread it for a while. 
Um, and I decided to get the cloth foundation because I really think I love the cloth foundations. I want to I want to collect these. I think these are really pretty. And I feel like so far I've only been able to get them on either online at like a thrift books or something or my there's a little country bookshop independent bookshop in one of the towns near me that has a bunch of them so I usually buy them there I mean so you know and that's where I bought this one um it was either this one or I wanted to get um um what was it um War and Peace but that's was even more expensive than this one and I would probably only be able to get one um I would probably like I would probably only be able to get that one if I got War and Peace in this edition so yeah I should technically be reading some of our other works before I get to this one but I couldn't help it you know the temptation to read on certain books is very strong in this one and so in Charles Dickens's work is very much ones I want to reread um so there's that one and now let's go to another historical fiction now this was an author that I bought his works right when we moved here so they've been sitting there for a while and I feel like I owe these works to be picked up and the first series is the pillars of the earth the series is called the Kingsbridge Chronicles um, and I think he recently just published a book from the series. Um, and I've got, I got to at least a chapter six in this one, which is still a good chunk. Um, because this is one of those books where the chapters are super long. And it is interesting, but again, just like some, um, like with, um, John Lynn Strange and no Mr. Norrell, it's kind of slow moving. Um, and of course, because it's medieval literature, there are certain characters that you just, male characters that you just, you just want to slap. You just can't stand them. And even the ones that are decent, or that are pretty decent, are still men and still have that kind of misogynistic attitude that as a woman reading this, you get very frustrated that that's how it was back then. Um, and then we have... Fall of Giants, which is his 20th century trilogy, his century trilogy, this first one set during World War One, and, um, the good news is this one doesn't have, he's still working on this one, I think, while well, this one already has, it's three books, so, unless the author decides to surprise people and write another book from this series, and make it a series, but I don't think he will at this point. Um, this is another one that I've started to read. Um, which I've always been a fan of World War II, World War One. Like you get a lot of World War Two stories. I feel like you don't get enough of World War One stories. So I, this is an author I need to get back to soon because, like I said, I I started him. I bought his books when we first moved here, which was in two thousand sixteen. <laughs> well, actually, it might have been two thousand seventeen when I bought them. Okay, and then last. But not least, we have we have Jane Austen's Northanger Abbey. Like, so I've read Sense and Sensibility twice, I think now, possibly three times. Yeah, three times because I read it once with Terry, and I read it again a second time in a separate cop. Like first time I read it in my big Barnes Noble hardback. Um, collection of her seven of her six novels and then I read it again in a separate paperback version of it because it's kind of hard to read those big chunky omnibus type novels that you can get at Barnes and Noble they're pretty they're great for aesthetics but they're hard to read um and then I recently got the um I decided to get the cloth bound edition that was one of my cloth bound books and I read it again in that. And then I read Pride and Prejudice twice, I think. 
Or maybe only, no, maybe only once I've read Pride and Prejudice. It feels like I've read Pride and Prejudice a lot more, but only I haven't. And the only reason it feels like I've read it more is because I have seen the adaptation quite a few times. And, um, and then, and I hear about it constantly because it's everyone's favorite Austin was work. And then I read Emma twice. And I read, I think, how many is that? All of them? The only ones I've read, I'm trying to, oh, Mansfield Park I've read once. Um... Now, I've not read Sendition yet, but I've heard from Terry herself, who watched the miniseries. She really liked it. Now, she hasn't read the books, but she's watched... She has not read the books, but she watched the miniseries. And that actually was one of the miniseries that got affected by COVID. Um, But this is one of the ones that I have not read, Northanger Abbey. And I was trying to decide if I wanted to read it for Jane Austen July, that Katie for Books and Things host, or save it for Victober. And I decided to go ahead and read it. For July, which will be coming up in a week. And it's not a long book. It's one of her shorter works. Um, and it's kind of a parody of gothic literature. And then I want to read Lady Susan at some point, And I want to read her Jail of Juvenalia as well. And I do want to re and I want to reread Mansfield Park. But like I said, this is kind of my priority first at the start of the month. Which, yeah, I, which I think it makes sense to read this first at the start of Jane Austen July. Like, read one of her, the one I haven't read first, and then reread one of her works. And then, like I said, read the um, books that are inspired by her works. And nonfiction, which I have two nonfiction works by her, about her, about her, not by her, about her, that I can read for Jane Austen July. So I'm happy I got plenty of material for that. Now, I don't have any adaptations, well, except for I do have Pride and Prejudice. So that's the only adaptation I can watch. The 2005 one with Kira Knightley. I don't know if I... I don't think I have any other ones. I do would love to get Emma, the TV miniseries, not the, um, the new the new Emma. And then, of course, there's Clueless, which is based on Emma. So, yeah, I'm quite a bit of Austin still to get through, but this is my priority, especially because I don't have Lady Susan or Sandition or her Juvenalia. So this is really the only one I can read that I have not read. At least out of her direct works. Like there's, like I said, there's, I have a couple that are inspired. And I almost, today, I went to the roast office and I almost bought um, Joe Baker's Longbourn, which is Pride and Prejudice through the servant's perspective. Um, but I almost bought that one, but then I was like, I decided not to. Yeah, so that is my back list of books, and that's a, sadly that is only a small list of what I have on my shelf that's back list, and there's a lot of classics on there. So, um, please share what your books, your series, or your books that are back list that you want to read, or um, I would love to hear in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell notification below if you want to be notified when I post new videos. And um, I hope you are enjoying your reading and having a ha having happy, healthy, and safe life. Alright, bye!